The debate about whether a corded or a cordless skill saw is a better tool is a fairly recent debate because most of the last, oh, what, three decades that cordless technology has been moving forward, nobody was confused about whether a cordless saw could compete with a corded saw. They were just completely different animals, completely different capability, and nobody even gave a thought as to whether or not you should actually try production framing with a cordless skill saw. But it's a new world. Cordless technology has come a long, long ways. And we've talked about this on this channel before, and we have threatened and promised that we would compare and contrast cordless to corded, and more specifically, the Makita 40 volt cordless with the Skill Mag 77, which has been my daily driver since I was a pup. Now, having said and pointed out that I have years, decades of experience and appreciation with the Skill Worm Drive, you've got to assume, and you're already thinking, well, Wadsworth, you're a dinosaur. Um, your confirmation bias is going to make your conclusion inescapable. And I don't know if we should even listen, and you might be right. But Makita sent this to us free of charge because it came to their attention that we didn't have one and that's why we hadn't reviewed it like we did the skill cordless skill saw. And so they sent us one and about a year ago, actually not quite a year ago, I started using this when it was time to start framing this little shop. So I've come this far using both of them. Probably 70% of the time this one so I would have something coherent to say today. So as I get ready to download on you what it is that I figured out about these, I want, you, I want to tell you right up front that I have reached a conclusion about this and I'm ready to defend it and I think it's correct. So let me go through the criteria that I think pertain to this discussion and then I'll let you know what I think and I expect in the comments you will let me know what you think. The first thing is these two saws are made for the same jobs. They are made to accomplish the same purpose. Rough work, you know, reasonably fine work, but they both are intended and can be used for setting forms, for framing, for rough framing, for bridge work if you have to, for stacking, for sheathing, for siding, you know, exterior trim. These things are coming to the table intending to compete head to head for the work that's going on by people like me and maybe by people like you. So we're not going to be copping out and saying, well, this one's made for that and this one's made for that. We're going to be talking about how they stack up on the same jobs. Should have used my skill. The first thing I want to point out is that this is a little lighter. Now it's not a lot lighter and possibly the difference is just the extra cord that this thing pulls around. But this thing weighs a little less. That's a plus. It's particularly a plus if you only barely have the strength you need to be using it. If you've got some extra strength, if you've got discretionary capacity in your arms and your wrists, well, maybe it doesn't add up to that big a deal. But for those of us that might be right on the bubble about whether or not we can even handle one of these things, a few ounces more or less can add up at the end of the day. The balance, next, for me, balance is a thing. I mean, if you've got a favorite rifle for hunting or a favorite pistol or a favorite tennis racket, I don't care what it is, balance is part of life and what makes our tools and our toys preferred, right? The balance on these is virtually identical. This might be a little more nose heavy because once again, you got the cord holding back, but they both hang right down there like a drop saw should. And so I'm gonna say there's no significant difference in the way that they drop into the battle position. They are. Uh, uh, an even match in that way, no preference. Power. Power is the gap that the cordless business had to close. It used to be that, you know, when these things first started coming to the table like you could actually do some work with them, they were a little laughable for anything except veneer or quarter inch plywood or cutting trim. But now the power is, I mean, it's within just a little bit, but the power is a little different. I mean, in a straight pull on similar boards, you know, green dug fir, I will say southern yellow pine for you pine appreciators, or any of the standard softwood framing members, you seldom think to yourself, huh, it pooped out. Now occasionally, like if you're ripping, if you're cutting two or three pieces of plywood stacked up and you get any lateral movement between the sheets so you're putting more friction on the side of the blade, as sometimes happens, 
The cordless can't do it. The cordless really drags if you get load on the side or a timber bound board pinching down and the corded has enough power to kind of power through some of that. I mean, you can pull this until the blade gets so hot that it starts to deflect, but this thing poops out in your hand and kind of hits the auto shut off mode if, um, if you're starting to accumulate the heat in there. So this has all the power you need. It never leaves you thinking, huh, gutless. But in a tough pull, which happens occasionally, it'll leave you thinking, man, maybe I should have grabbed my skill saw. All right, the function of the controls. I mean, the way things present to your hands so you can get the full range of, of functions out of these things. They're so close that they don't even bear mentioning. They work in the same way. Now there are some subtle distinctions. The lever's a little bigger. The, the 56 degree angle, I think it'll go to, yeah, 53, 53 or 56. It goes a long ways. It's got presets. This does too. There's not a dime's worth of difference in how these things function with the table. There, and as far as the skyhook, there might be a dime's worth of difference. I was skeptical about the, just the sheer size of that, about whether or not it would get a hold of the top of a, of a joist or a two by 12 rafter but it does, it hooks and it hangs, and it's big enough that it's a better handle. See, that's a handle for climbing, so you can grab a vertical piece and climb on up the wall, hanging onto the sky hook. This one's not really, kind of. So, sky hook wins, sky hook's fine. In general, the location of the saw wrench, identical. I'm gonna say there's just very little reason to pick one over the other, based on how they operate with the accessories and the table and the, and the blade and the guard, and it's, it's apples to apples. Next item, toughness, durability. And I can't quite speak to that because I've only got a few months on this. I mean, I haven't run this to exhaustion. It hasn't taken any hard falls. I've been careful. But my impression is that this is tougher. This just feels a little lighter, because it is a little lighter. There's more plastic. So this is a bit of a baseless assertion, but I'm gonna assert anyway that this is a tougher tool and it'll take a harder life than this will for longer. Take that with a grain of salt. I can't back it up, but it's my impression. All right, this next broad general category, I lumped all at once and I'm calling it convenience, safety, and satisfaction to use. Um, convenience, clear winner most of the time, or at least part of the time. It is nice to be able to roll onto a job, open your toolbox, grab a saw, walk across the yard, walk across the field, put it in a backpack, I don't care. You can go a long ways, forget the, the extension cord and do some work. That's convenient. On the minus side of the ledger, that button right there, that safety button, is not convenient if you're cutting out of position or sometimes if you're hanging out on a ladder. Not only is it not convenient, but sometimes it's just not safe because of what it obligates you to do with another hand. So the safety feature of having the lockout sometimes works against safety, at least compared to what I'm used to. There's a soft start feature on this and that is, you pull the trigger for just a second, part of a second, and then it starts up a little bit slow. I think that's probably safer. It reduces the likelihood of kickback, but it also builds in a little lag time for a guy like me who's used to an instantaneous start and instead gets a soft start. So that's just personal adjustment, probably safer on balance, um, coupled with being lighter but not too light. I would say safety probably goes to this. But let's drill down just a little further. If in some future world, maybe six months from now, somebody's developed a cordless saw that weighs as much as an envelope or weighs as much as the pencil in your pouch, and nobody's going to, but if this got much lighter, the power to weight ratio would get so far out of balance that it would become unsafe. Another safety item which is unquestionably worthwhile is that there's a bit of an electric brake on this. Stops a little quicker than this one does. That's a good concession to safety, I like it. I don't know if they had to engineer that in or if it's just a function of being driven by a, 
a brushless electric motor, doesn't matter. Safety goes to the Makita. The other thing that goes to the Makita is smoothness, or at least it does while this table remains relatively unscarred. I'm gonna try this thing for the next run. Honest opinion, that Makita was smooth. It was smoother, easier on my wrist. There's just something about pushing that thing. It's a smoother cutting experience. Yeah, that slides easier. So, that's good. As far as satisfaction of use, this has a cool factor, right? But on the other hand, I've run this battery to exhaustion a few times, and boy, it makes you grind your teeth to have to climb down off the scaffold and go across the job to plug it in because you either forgot to plug it in the night before or it just exhausted itself and somebody else grabbed the battery. So however much satisfaction you get up for how smoothly it slides is easily devoured by the frustration of running out of juice when you needed it. There's another place that the Makita wins, and that is somehow they put this together to where it'll cut two and nine sixteenths deep. And the mag cuts two and a quarter. Now that is a significant difference. I mean, you can cut down, you can cut down through a stack of three sheets of three quarter inch plywood with that at one pass. And sometimes that's a money maker. So of everything I've mentioned so far, that to me is the biggest distinction between the two saws on the side of the Makita. Next item, and you've probably already flashed on this if you've been thinking about these guys is, this one costs twice the money. Now you can get them on sale and sometimes there's uh, incentives for batteries and, and, and. But this one costs roughly twice the money that this one costs, and not only that. But after you break this one or it gets rained on or, you know, who knows, somebody can steal this out of back of your truck because they're not dragging a cord and you've got to replace it once or twice, or let's just look forward to the day when Makita, bless their heart, and I love teal blue, changes the battery platform. I mean, they have to do that in the arms race that is cordless technology. You're gonna have to go through the whole deal again, and this, this guy, value and uh, less money coming in the gate. So we have two elephants left in our living room. And the first is, yeah, with one you're dragging a cord and with one you're not. So the advantage, the overwhelming advantage of the Makita is you're not dragging a cord. The overwhelming disadvantage of the Makita is sometimes you don't have a cord. And continuing to use the rhetorical device, the advantage of a skill saw is that sometimes you've got a cord and the disadvantage is sometimes you've got to drag a cord. So on any given day, at any given moment, in the middle of any given task, sometimes you've got to have a cord for raising and lowering your saw, and sometimes having a cord is going to cost you time. But here's the unexpected benefit to a cord and liability to not having a cord. I did not realize that almost every time I needed my skill saw and it was not where I was standing, I was subconsciously letting my mind, letting my eyes track the trajectory of the cord to find where I'd left my saw. If this saw right now had been left up on that second floor, I wouldn't have any trouble finding it. If I would, had come down here and started another task, I would simply see the cord and say, oh, and go and get it. But if I had left this either up on the scaffold or up on the second floor and then had been drawn off to another task or a phone call or gone around the, and came back in, I might have to walk up and down the stairs and climb up and down the scaffold and spend I don't know, two or three or four or five minutes looking for where in the world did I leave that saw? Now is that just because I'm 65? Maybe. But for the 40 years, 45 years I've been using skill saws, I have always known that when in doubt, just trace the cord out and you're going to find your saw. The other thing is, you can bring the saw to you. You can lower it over an edge. Don't try that with this guy, because I don't think the plastic case is going to take it. Let me wrap this up, and I can tell you that I feel entirely justified in my conclusion. 
First of all, I'm always going to carry both these saws and I'll probably use this 80% of the time because boy, it is convenient and it will do almost everything. But I'm never going to be caught without my skill because there are some things that only this will do to my satisfaction or to the satisfaction of anybody that's ever run one. Now, given that, given that I'll probably use this saw more hours a week than I'll use this saw, if I had to pick just one, if it was only one saw that I could afford or one saw that I could take or if I was going with Lewis and Clark and I could only bring one skill saw with me to the Pacific, it would be this one and I will tell you why. A skill saw with a 40 or a 50 foot cord on it is going to put more money in your pocket at the end of the year or at the end of the decade than this beautiful, convenient, smooth, shiny, cordless wonder. Thanks for watching Essential Craftsman and keep up the good work.